Welcome to my new Try Hack Me series where I go over the SOC 1 analyst module that I've been recommending everybody do in the comments. I've been getting a lot of questions on what can I do and what do I do to help get the job and this is one thing that you can do to add to your resume. And best of all, you get these certificates that say you completed it. So without further ado, let's dive in. All right, so you're gonna wanna navigate to tryhackme.com. Once you're there, you're gonna wanna create your account. If you don't already have one, I do. So I'm just gonna sign in. Mad, look that you're not a robot. You're gonna sign in and then you're gonna wanna go to the learn, accept those cookies. And then as you can see, this is why I've been recommending everybody go to this is there are so many modules that gives you the intro that you need. If you wanna do penetration testing, there's red teaming, there's junior penetration testing, there's all these other modules that you can go into that really bolster your knowledge. And as of now, they've added the SOC level one that I think everybody who's watching this should go and complete in its entirety as it gives you invaluable insight into what exactly goes into being a SOC level one analyst. And if you're watching this video, this is probably the position that you're trying to get as a SOC level one analyst, which is the you know, very basic beginner type of work. So at the top here, you'll kind of see a high level overview of what a SOC level one analyst is. They're a triage specialist, incident response. There's a lot of different names for it. And these are the responsibilities that you'll be doing. You're gonna be doing 24 seven, potentially. <laughs> I'm only working eight hours. Monitoring, investigating alerts. You're gonna configure and manage security tools, develop and implement IDS signatures, uh, intrusion detection system signatures, and you're gonna escalate if you need. So let's get into the first module. So this first module is just gonna go over that top level view again gives you an understanding of the type of work. So you'll see here, spend a lot of time triaging and monitoring event logs and alerts. You're gonna be like the, the guard dog at the front. Monitor, investigate the alerts, configure and manage tools, all the stuff in the first page. You'll notice here, this the qualifications are zero to two years. So you know it depends on the job that you're applying to. Some jobs require no experience. If they're just looking for someone fresh, some require a lot more experience because they wanna pay a little bit more and have you just go from the start. And then there's basic understanding of all these principles and concepts. And this is kind of something that I went into in depth on a watch before your next interview video. So if you haven't seen that, please check it out. It'll prepare you as far as these concepts go for your next interview. And then there's the scripting and programming skills that you don't necessarily need to know, especially if you're going for that zero years experience SOC position. But if you're gonna be configuring and managing the tools, then you're gonna to need to know how to code. And that's kind of what my new promotion is about. I have to code, uh, at least to some degree, some, some threat detection coding, it's specifically in Yara, which actually touches on further on in this module. And then it actually mentions Security Plus, which I've been recommending this to a lot of people. People put this down. It's widely known, HR knows what it is. They actively put it on for requirements. And there's a reason for it because it has a top level view of security. It helps more than it hurts. But here's the usual three tiers that you find in a, a lot of SOC positions. There's the initial tier one, triage, incident responder. These are deeper investigations. And then there's the senior, which is the tier three. They're gonna be doing the more advanced stuff that tier one and tier two can't perform or they tried and they're just, they're not finding that smoking gun. You'll see here, what's your role as a security analyst? You put in the answer, triage specialist. It, uh, you'll hit the button there, it'll give you the correct answer. You move on to the second one. What exactly is a SOC? It kind of gives you again, a high level overview. This is what you do in the job. What's included in the responsibilities, log collection, knowledge base. There's a whole circle of information. Preparation and prevention, they recommend that you go to Twitter and Feedly. So basically stay involved. So you need to find a, a source of information that gives you threat intel, information on current threats and new threats, because this is an ever evolving field. You're gonna need to learn as you go along constantly. And then you do monitoring investigation using SIEM tools and EDR tools. These are two different things that you wanna go into and learn how to use. This course will actually let you touch on a rudimentary SIEM tool it gives you a taste for what it might look like. Doesn't require an answer. You just click the button there, it'll say you read that, and you move on to the next section. If you're watching this video, you probably have a good understanding of what a day in the life is since you've watched my other videos. It's exciting, it's rewarding, it's fast paced. It's not fast paced, but it is exciting and it's, uh, it's scary, it's very scary. A lot of anxiety inducing days. So are you ready to immerse yourself in the role? So it gives you a site here. And this is what I meant by that rudimentary scene tool. So you'll notice here, there's five logs or five entries, I should say, in this log. And you see a login failure, password expired, which might've caused this multiple failed login attempts. And then they finally signed in. Maybe they reset their password and it's okay. But then you see this unauthorized connection attempt. 
and then followed by the same IP with a successful SSH attempt. They're on the network. And if you don't know what SSH is, it's a secured shell. It, it basically gives you access to whatever you just SSH'd into as if you had full access, like you were standing in front of the computer. So the first question is, what is the malicious IP address in the alerts? So you'll see that it's asking for this IP here. You hit enter. It does give you a hint. You shouldn't need it though. <laughs> hit the button, correct answer. And then you move on, you enter the IP address, and then you also notice once you hit this, malicious. But at the top, it'll say there's other databases like Abusal, IP, DP, Cisco, Talos Intelligence, URL scan is commonly used, Virus Total, I use IP Info. There's a lot of different sites that you can go to to see the reputation and where exactly an IP is even coming from. Now that we know it's malicious, we need to escalate it because we saw that SSH connection was successful. So if these are failed login attempts, we have a little bit more time to kind of figure it out. But since there's a successful sign-in, this has now become an incident. You need to forward this immediately to your SOC team lead, which is Will Griffin. Right here, you'll see, I put it in already, Will Griffin. Now you've been given permission by Will to block the address, which I do fairly often in my current job. So you'll type in the address 221.181.185. 159 and you'll block it denied and then you'll see this message which you don't typically see unless your automation team is really they really like to mess around and just be funny with their automation but until we meet again that's what you'll put in there and hit the submit button you'll see you got the correct answer and that's it for this section and then it'll pop up a window asking do you want to move to the next room and then you will go to the next room because you're going to complete this entire course and you're going to become better than i am at my job well that's it for the first part in the series if you'd like me to continue the series i'm more than willing to subscribe as you can see i'm not actually subscribed on that account but if this is something that people want to see then i'd love to continue it for my own learning as well as everybody else is out there it's something that you can add to your resume. It's something that you can actively learn hands-on. And that's, and if you're like me, you learn a lot more when you are doing it hands-on more than just watching me explain it to you or doing it in front of you. You kind of have to go in there and tinker around for yourself. But yeah, thanks again for watching. We'll see you in the next video.